At one point, Clemson football is at the top of the college football world, winning six straight ACC titles and appearing in the college football playoffs six times. They have not made the college football playoffs since 2020. Now they find themselves in a prove-it scenario after three straight disappointing seasons. They are coming off one of their worst seasons in ACC play in over the past decade, and everyone is now doubting them. But how did we get here? This is the fall of Clemson football. But before we get into this, if you enjoy college football content like this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Also, let me know who you think will win the ACC in the comment section below. Heading into the 2020 college football season, there were high expectations for Clemson, as they were led by former five-star recruit Trevor Lawrence. Lawrence was projected to be the number one pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, was viewed as a generational talent. The Tigers are coming off five straight college football playoff appearances, where they made the national title game four times, winning two national titles. They were one of the Goliaths of college football, along with Alabama. They were coming off a tough loss to a generational LSU team in the 2020 national title game. Along with Lawrence, the offense was headlined by players like Travis Etienne and Omari Rogers, who were without Justin Ross for the season. They were led by James Skalski, Andrew Booth, and Baylor Spector on the defensive side of the ball. Clemson started off the 2020 season strong, blowing out everyone heading into their matchup with Boston College. 42-17 over number 7 Miami, and 73-7 over Georgia Tech, among others. But 2020 was full of surprises, mainly due to the events of 2020 and right before the Boston College game, it was announced that Trevor Lawrence had tested positive for COVID-19, would be out for two weeks. At the time, Lawrence had thrown for 1,833 yards, 17 touchdowns and two interceptions, and was one of the main people to speak out to make sure the college football season was played during this year. With Lawrence out, Clemson looked to former five-star freshman DJ Uyunglele, who was the top-ranked pro-style quarterback in the 2020 recruiting cycle and the heir apparent to Lawrence following the 2020 season. DJ came in and impressed after learning he was going to be the starter on short notice. He completed 73.2% of his passes for 342 yards and two touchdowns, while also rushing for a touchdown on the ground and a 34-28 win. The following week, Clemson took on number 4 Notre Dame in South Bend in a highly anticipated matchup that brought college game day into town. While Clemson would lose a heartbreaker 47-40 in double overtime, DJ impressed completing 65.9% of his passes for 439 yards and two touchdowns, while also rushing for another score on the ground. Remember talking heads during this period saying they thought that maybe Clemson should finish out the season with DJU rather than Trevor Lawrence? Because DJ, some felt, was better. A completely absurd idea, but something that was talked about. Lawrence would return to the starting role and led the Tigers to three straight wins to end the regular season, including a win over Notre Dame and Charlotte to avenge their loss in November 34-10 in the ACC title game. Clemson would take on Ohio State in New Orleans for the first round of the college football playoff, losing to the Buckeyes 49-28. Following the season, Clemson watched as Trevor Lawrence, Travis Etienne, Jackson Carmen, Amari Rogers, and Cornell Powell all get drafted while they watched a handful of players transfer out. Justin Ross returned to the team as well as DJU, Brian Breesey, James Galski, Andrew Booth, and Baylor Spector, and the Tigers looked to win their 7th straight ACC title and their 7th straight appearance in the college football playoffs for the 2021 season. While their defense was loaded, their offense would struggle throughout the season as DJU did not live up to expectations. In their season opener against number 5 Georgia and Charlotte, they would be unable to score a touchdown losing 10-3, as DJ completed 51.4% of his passes for 178 yards and an interception. They rebounded with wins over South Carolina State and Georgia Tech, with the latter being a 14-8 game, before losing to NC State in the Textile Bowl 27-21 in double overtime, basically eliminating them from the college football playoff. They fell all the way down to 25 in the AP Top 25, and survived an upset bid against Boston College 2019-13, would fall out of the AP Top 25 for the first time since Week 4 of the 2011 season, over a decade of constantly being ranked in the AP Top 25. They would survive another close game against Syracuse before losing to Pitt 27-17 on the road. A five-game win streak to close out the regular season saw them return to the Top 25, and they would beat Iowa State in the Cheez-It Bowl 20-13, but their dynasty was now over. They were no longer a giant of the game, as they missed the ACC title game for the first time since 2014, as well as missing the college football playoffs for the first time since then as well. DJ finished the season throwing for 2,246 yards, 9 touchdowns and 10 interceptions, completing 55.6% of his passes, 
while also rushing for four touchdowns on the ground, making some fans worry and call for incoming freshman Cade Klubnik to take over the starting quarterback role right away. Following the season, Clemson watched as Andrew Booth and Baylor Specter were drafted during the 2022 NFL Draft, while Nolan Turner, James Galski, Mario Goodrich, and Justin Ross all signed with NFL teams as undrafted free agents. They also saw the departure of offense coordinator Tony Elliott, who took the Virginia head coaching job, and defensive coordinator Brett Venables, who took over at Oklahoma as their head coach. Elliott was replaced by Brandon Streeter, while Venables was replaced by Wes Goodwin and Mickey Kahn. Many hoped DJ would take the next step in 2022 and show off the talent he had flashed during the 2020 season, and Will Shipley looked to be a playmaker on offense, while Brian Breezy t- looked to take over on defense. Clemson came into the season ranked 4th in the AP preseason poll and started the season 8-0, but things were boiling below the surface. In their matchup on the road against Notre Dame, the same team DJ made a name for himself against just two years earlier, almost to the day, Clemson's offense was struggling. On the second drive of the third quarter, the Tigers would have their best drive of the game, but that is when Dabo Sweeney decided to pull DJ. DJ told The Athletic back in 2022, I don't think my offense coordinator knew that Sweeney wanted to go at Klubnik. Sweeney said, I just want to get a spark. I was pissed like, what do you mean a spark? We just had our best drive right there. I'm doing exactly what you're telling me to do. Clemson would lose the game 35-14, and for the remainder of the season, Dabo would rotate between DJ and Cade. They would win their next two games before losing to South Carolina 31-30. They then beat North Carolina in the ACC title game before losing to Tennessee in the Orange Bowl. Following the season, DJ would decide to transfer and blasted the Clemson offense under offense coordinator Brandon Streeter, calling it basic and saying you really can't show off your ability in it. Streeter would be fired following the season and was replaced by TCU offense coordinator Garrett Riley. In 2021, Clemson had plummeted from a top 10 offense in the nation down to a bottom 10 offense. Dan Orlovsky spoke on Clemson back in 2021 saying, It would be really silly if you're Clemson to look at the last three times that you've gone on the field with teams that had similar talent as you, and think that your coaching has maximized the talent gap. It didn't against LSU, it didn't against Ohio State, and it didn't against Georgia. For you to sit there and not address, hey, schematically, can we do the same stuff that we did in 2017? Can we? Right now, that answer is no. While RG3 called the offense archaic, and that was all under Tony Elliott. Things only got worse under Streeter, and when you don't have a generational quarterback, running back, and wide receivers group, it's hard to cover those issues up. Along with the scheme issues, Clemson had not been able to produce NFL-caliber offense alignment for years now, which only holds them back, even more. Unlike Nick Saban in Alabama, Clemson was unable to adapt for years. Clemson fans hoped a more innovative offense would arrive with Riley. In 2023, the offense was once again a mess, struggling to remain consistent. Once again, the Clemson offense line struggled to take over in games and did not perform well. Kate Klubnik also did not take the next step. Clemson Wire wrote back in January, situational awareness was lacking, and Klubnik failed to show everyone why he was such a highly touted recruit. Add in the struggles at wide receiver with health and explosiveness, the Tigers really didn't have a shot in 2023. Clemson would go 9-4 last year and had their worst record in the ACC since 2010, going 4-4 in conference play. Clemson fans will hope that the offense can take the next step this year, as they should have another elite defense like they always do. Rather than having national title expectations this year, they are being labeled as a surprise team that could make some noise. Bill Steele wrote, Head coach Dabo Sweeney's lack of transfer portal use has been criticized. But Steele believes the team's continuity will be a strength with numerous returning starters, including quarterback Kate Klubnik. Not to mention, no active coach has more college football playoff appearances than Sweeney now that Nick Saban has retired. Clemson returns a lot of their offense from 2023, and their success will hinge on what Kate Klubnik can do and whether their offensive line can improve as well. They will be tested almost immediately, taking on number one Georgia in their opening matchup in Mercedes-Benz Stadium. They then host a tough App State team before starting ACC play against NC State. They then host Stanford before Florida State comes to town, followed by Wake Forest on the road. Virginia Tech and Louisville at home for a massive road trip to Virginia Tech, followed by a trip to Pitt, before ending the season at home against the Citadel and South Carolina. Phil Steele projects Clemson to win the ACC this season, and they should return to the college football playoff if they do so. It would be their first appearance since 2020. But there's also a wild scenario where they can start the season off 0-3, and from there the season could fall apart. If it does happen, may Clemson look to make a change? Who knows? 
What do you think? Can Clemson return to the college football playoff? This year, let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out one of my other videos YouTube thinks you will love right here. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, remember to embrace the grind.